Hey all, Binks here, and we had some really exciting news recently. We have the entirety of the first wave of Series 4 has been announced. There are 10 brand new cards that are going to be coming to Marvel Snap really soon. They're thinking sometime early next week, so like the last week of November. I'm really excited about it. I took some time to theory craft some decks on stream and just talk to my stream about what we think about certain cards. So in this video, I'm gonna summarize those, give you a specific deck that I think all of these cards are going to go into and just give my overall thoughts. As always, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube for daily Marvel Snap content. You can catch me live at twitch.tv slash banks underscore place. Enjoy. Our first card is Luke Cage, a two energy, one power with ongoing your cards can't have their power reduced. So it does have low stats for the cost, so only one power for two energy, but it has a lot of cool little synergies. You know, any location that's going to reduce power, this is going to negate that and really help you win that lane against your opponent. Um, things like Yellow Jacket that afflict your own cards with negative one, this is going to help against. Things like Spider Woman from your opponent. Uh, Typhoid Mary completely gets rid of the negatives of. Uh, but what I really think we're going to see this card shine with is some cool hazmat combos. So the deck that I'm expecting to play with Luke Cage from day one, it's going to be kind of a hazmat Exodia type combo. So we're really trying to use things like Wong, Mystique and Odin to just trigger hazmat as many times as possible. You know, if we can end up getting four, even as many as eight hazmat triggers, it's almost going to be impossible for our opponent to keep up because none of our cards are going to get reduced. Every card that they have out in the field is going to get negative eight. We're going to be at a really good position. So uh, we just have an early kind of draw package with like Adam Warlock, Hawkeye, and Yellow Jacket to try and get some draw early. We have magic to extend the game, and then we're just trying to combo and get as many of those triggers as possible. This might not be the most refined list, but I really think that Luke Cage is going to be a lot of fun with lists like this to make your opponent lose rather than try to make you win. Next up, we have She-Hulk, a 6 energy, 10 power card with cost 1 less for each unspent energy last turn. I think that this card is going to be incredible. I mean, anytime you're just kind of like losing a little bit of energy, this card can get a huge benefit. Kind of think of it like Sunspot where, you know, you're missing out on some energy, but you can make it back later. Now, there's some very clear combos that this works with. Uh, obviously, Sunspot, they kind of work in tandem. Uh, wave is an incredible synergy that this card has. You know, if you wave uh, on turn five and you have maybe like two energy that you're missing, you can play any card as well as She-Hulk. So uh, I really think with that kind of like death wave list, you can even if you get four destruction triggers, you wave on five by itself, you can play She-Hulk, death, and any other cards that's going to be really, really hard to beat. I think that's probably the best deck, but I wanted to look at a different idea that I really have for She-Hulk, which is a lot of fun, which is going to be in an infinite list. So what's really cool with the infinite, you know, you're going to pass turn five, so that's five unspent energy, and then She-Hulk's going to cost one. Maybe you're looking at that like, oh no, I can't really play that and the infinite on the same turn, but there's a little card called Psylocke. So with Psylocke, we spend that Psylocke on turn four, then on turn five, when we're skipping, we have six energy. We can invest that into the sunspot even. Then on turn six, we have a huge power swing turn of 30 power playing both the She-Hulk and the Infinite. And it's going to be pretty darn consistent. You know, as long as you get that Psylocke down, there's going to be about half games. We're going to have She-Hulk and the Infinite on turn six. I think that this could be really fun. You know, it's a little bit more kind of pool too friendly. If you don't have all the cards for a Death Wave list, I really think that this deck is going to shine. Next up. Fittingly, after She-Hulk, we have Titania, a one energy, five power that says when any card is played at this location, this card switches sides. Now, this card has so many interesting things going on. What I love is cards that encourage intelligent play, and there might be no like better example than Titania because Titania opens up this crazy level of mind games of trying to get Titania to be the fourth card in your opponent's slot so they can't control it and then pull Titania back to your side at the end of the game. It's like a better Green Goblin in a lot of ways for cheaper, uh, but there's it's really cool because your opponent can kind of give you some counterplay and there's a lot of things that can happen. Basically, it's going to jump back and forth whenever any card is played. We don't know the exact ways that Titania will work, uh, but it seems like in a controlling style deck, you can really use Titania to both uh, deny your opponent some board space and be able to get a big power swing on turn six. As far as a deck that I prepared for Titania, I really think like a cool 
control style list is where you're going to want to run her so we have cards like green goblin and black widow to kind of you, you know push our opponent to have extra space uh, we don't really care about too many things so like a card like thor works really well here mjolnir is also going to be one of the best cards to pull titania back to your side at the end of games uh, angela for some power and then just really cool control type cards like polaris spider-man professor x arrow just ways to manipulate our opponent's side of the board i think that this deck is going to be a terror and i'm super super excited for titania to enter the game and we have Absorbing Man, a four energy, three power with on reveal. The last card you played has an on reveal ability. This card copies it. So it's very similar to what Mystique does for those ongoing effects where she can copy an ongoing effect. And I think Absorbing Man is just a great staple card for any kind of on reveal deck that's trying to do big things. You know, it's very similar to Wong in a lot of ways. You know, with Wong, usually you're just looking to get like one additional on reveal trigger absorbing man can do it but after the fact so you can kind of change up some ordering and i think that they're just going to work really really well in tandem uh i think that absorbing man can fit into tons and tons of different decks as just a additional way to trigger some of these great on reveal abilities uh the deck that i prepared for him is just kind of like a really solid like odin white tiger dr doom type deck you can even utilize this with arrow so you can play arrow on one turn the next turn you could just absorbing man and do it again uh but i feel like with absorbing man you kind of want some more smaller cards to be able to copy those abilities a little bit easier in the later game uh, so this is just kind of a cool on reveal type deck that just looks to win a lot of lanes has some controlling options uh, i think you're going to see absorbing man a lot when he comes out and i think he's going to be a great addition to marvel snap these next two cards we'll kind of talk about in tandem because I feel like they fit into very similar decks and they have a lot of similarities between them. We have Agent Coulson, a three energy, four power card with on reveal at a random four cost and five cost card to your hand. And then Maria Hill, a two energy, three power card with on reveal at a random one cost card to your hand. So I feel like both of these kind of fit into collector devil dinosaur style decks, just getting additional cards into your hand and adding them for collector or just increasing your hand size for that devil dinosaur. Um, as far as cases outside of those decks, I don't really see much use case for Agent Coulson. Maybe in like draft style, it's kind of nice to be able to just have that curve of playing a three cost, four cost and five cost all from Agent Coulson. Uh, but Maria Hill, I think has some serious utility. You're gonna play it as just a well-statted two energy, three power card. You're getting a random one cost card into your hand. Now, think about how many times, you, you know, between turns three and six, you're just floating a single mana. If you're playing Maria Hill earlier in the game, you're getting that one cost card kind of additionally added to your hand that you can fill into one of those spots. So I think that Maria Hill does have some pretty cool use cases and I think that she can just be a great just filler two drop card. Uh, as far as the deck that I would put both of them in, uh, I think that just in a devil dinosaur deck, I think is really where they're gonna shine the most. I really like having kind of a small destruction package along with my double dinosaur deck. So we have things like Hood, Bucky Barnes, Nova, Carnage, and Deathlock. And that's also really good with like Maria Hill. There's a lot of cool one drops that sometimes you just kind of want to uh, destroy them so you can get them destroyed with like Carnage or Deathlock. Uh, but then we have the big finisher with double dinosaur, lots of ways to fill our hand. Quinjet is going to be really, really good in this deck because you're going to be uh, creating so many resources. You know, Quinjet, Maria Hill, you're ending up getting a zero energy card to play uh so i think that this deck is going to be a lot of fun the moment i get maria hill agent colson i'm going to do a lot of double dinosaur shenanigans i think that they're cool kind of more filler cards to that to the game and i really do think that maria hill has some serious potential outside of these double dinosaur decks next up we have helicarrier a six energy 10 power card that reads when you discard this from your hand add three random cards to your hand now i could theory craft i could mess around with like what i think that this card will do I think this card is terrible. I don't think there is any reason to add this to your deck. I think there's some weird fringe cases where like randomly adding this to your hand, maybe in like a draft style deck, this is okay just cause it's a 600 G 10 power. But honestly, there's no reason you should be trying to focus on discard. Like let's say you play Sif and Helicarrier on the same deck, then you're spending both Sif to discard Helicarrier to get plus three cards in your hand. It's just, I feel like you're taking too many steps to add random cards, which just generally aren't going to be that good for your game plan. So I didn't even theory craft for this. I don't think Helicarrier is going to be worth it to play in like any deck. I might meme around with it a little bit, but honestly, 
bit of a disappointing card to get excited for in series four could be kind of fun and see some cool highlights but overall just kind of meh next we have mbaku a one energy two power card that reads if this is in your deck at the end of the game it jumps to a random location so if this does end up at the bottom of your deck through regular means you're going to draw nine cards out of your 12 cards so there'd be a one in four that this ends up in your deck just naturally it'll jump out and give you an additional two power somewhere kind of works like angel that will fly out of your deck uh, i don't think that umbaku has too many use cases i think that the randomness not being able to have any kind of ability on a one energy two power card is just not going to make it strong enough that two power that you get isn't huge if it is going to have some utility though i believe it's going to be in a lockjaw style deck so if we look at this deck list here uh, we just kind of have our standard lockjaw style deck we have you know things like wasp uh, things like Thor to add zero power cards and then Jane Foster the mighty Thor to pull them back out and kind of what we'd be aiming to do here is to play Mbaku on the very last turn on that lockjaw lane so we get one more trigger uh, of the lockjaw putting Mbaku into the deck pulling a different card out and then what we'll see is that Mbaku will always jump out then because we're putting it into the deck on the very last turn now, is this going to be strong enough or important enough to want to fit it into one of these lockjaw decks over just, you know, let's say like an Iceman in this list? I'm not really sure, but I think that this is going to be where this deck will shine and where Umbaku might shine if he does get the chance. I'm definitely going to be trying it day one. Next up, we have Atuma, a four energy, 10 power card. It says, if you have another card here at the end of your turn, destroy this. So very similar to like Namor, a four energy, 10 power, but with some restrictions, you know, Namor has to be in the lane by itself. Atuma will die if any other card ends up in that lane. Uh, Atuma's gonna be weak to things like goblins or any locations that add like squirrels out, uh, you know, to different locations. So there are gonna be some problems with trying to play Atuma, but obviously very overstated so there's some great use cases uh, it has great synergies with armor if you have an armored lane you can just play a two men to it have no problems it's not going to destroy itself uh, you can also curve it out with professor x if you play a two men a lane professor x in a lane you're going to get 13 power there and the atuma is going to be safe so it uh, definitely has some great synergies there a lot of people think it might fit into that that destroyer style deck uh, where i see atuma fitting well is into like the zero venom list as another giant card with the downside that you can eat with the Venom. So uh, let's just pull up that list here. Uh, you know, we have Zero, which can get rid of the downside of Atuma. You know, obviously just really easy synergy there. Uh, Typhoid Mary, Red Skull, Maximus, all these cards with bad downsides, but super overstatted. And then we're gonna be trying to use things like Venom to destroy them and turn that extra power and get rid of the downside. So this is the list I'm gonna play on turn one. Definitely could probably fit into the Destroyer list too. Uh, but I think that with the Zero list, having another big chonky card is really gonna make a difference. So I see a lot of potential potential on this list and I'm excited to try it and the last but not least we have Orca a six energy nine power card nice that says ongoing plus five power if this is your only card here this may seem familiar this is the exact same ongoing ability as Namor so you're paying two more energy for four extra power definitely pretty interesting right when this goes off it's a six energy 14 power card that's on like giganto status uh, that's like a completely souped up devil dinosaur kind of size so definitely nothing to scoff at and if it doesn't go off you're still getting a six energy nine power which is at a shava's level so definitely some potential there uh, i think that orca you really want to play it in like a very big deck or a deck where you're not playing very many cards maybe like a super controlly style deck but if you have an empty lane slamming this down on turn six is pretty darn scary you know a lot of times you're not expecting a huge 14 power swing from your opponent uh, so there's some really cool things that can go on there uh, what i'm expecting to see orkin would be just like a pretty straightforward electro style list so i kind of took a very similar as just my like standard electro list uh, i like to run sunspot and all my electro decks a kind of flex two drop card uh I like daredevil armor scorpion all good choices uh, we have electro and wave on the three slot and then we have three five costs and five six costs 
you can't run Doctor Doom realistically if you're going to be running Orca. Leader's also a little bit iffy, so you might have to adjust that, but Leader can probably work. I think Doctor Doom's a little bit worse, uh, but Orca can just be that, you, you know, big card that you slam down a lane, kind of like uh, Giganto is, you know, it just competes for a lane all by itself. You slam it down in five against your opponent. Maybe they have like three power there. They're going to have to invest their entire turn to try and beat that Orca, or you can use the rest of it to uh, fight for one of those other lanes. I'm not sure if Orca will really make an Electro list at the end of the day, and I'm not sure exactly where Orca will fit, but I think that it's a cool new big monster to have in your collection. Uh, well, thank you all so much for watching this video. Comment down below which Series 4 card you are most excited for. I would love, I will keep very active in these comments and talk to people because I love theory crafting. Let me know about the decks that uh, you saw today, what you think, and once again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Binks out. Watch that one too.